I'm just waiting for a couple more people to come in and then we're going to get started, okay? No problem. Kira, do you want me to make you call us back or that's okay? All right, so good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Me Health Hospitals and Social Services Committee here at Bronx Community Board 8. I do want to welcome Mr. Kenneth Johnson from the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. 
Um, tonight, Mr. Johnson is here to speak about COVID-19 vaccinations testing within CB8. So I do want to welcome Mr. Johnson here. I think it's your first meeting here, right? Yes. Right. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming and thank you so much for giving us an update on what's been going on. So with that said, I will turn the floor over to you, Mr. Johnson. Do you need me to make you all do you have a presentation or you you? Uh, if, if, if you could um, allow me screen sharing privileges. Um, yes. I don't, I don't have a, I don't have any slide or anything. I just I'm uh -huh. gonna share some things uh, with you all and go through some data points. Right, all right. So I made you call all, so now you can share. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Omar. Thank you. Um, so good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Kenneth Johnson. I'm uh, a community liaison uh, at the health department. Um, I'm a community liaison for the borough of the Bronx. Uh, so I, I work with uh, community boards, uh, elected officials, um, you know, different things like that. Um, thank you to the community board for, for inviting me here tonight. It's nice to, nice to be with you all. Um, I just, I'm just going to go through, uh, uh, have some announcements from the health department. Um, I'm going to go through, you know, some citywide data, and then we'll get down to the uh, community board data. Um, and then, of course, I'll be available to answer any questions uh, that anyone might have. So um, just starting off, um, uh, as you all know, or you, you all may or may not know, um, the, in the past two weeks, we've entered into the COVID alert level medium. Um, and, and basically, the, the COVID alert level, uh, is a, it's, a, it's a combination of cases per 100,000 people um, combined with the stress on the healthcare system. Um, so that involves, uh, you know, people that are hospitalized, um, and in the amount of people that we're seeing uh, uh, sick with, with COVID. Um, currently, citywide, we're at about 250 or 260 uh, cases per 100,000. Um, if we move to 300 cases per 100,000, I believe at that point we would enter into the next uh, COVID alert level. Um, uh, you know, there, there, there aren't any firm policy changes uh, based on the alert level, um, you know, going from low to medium to high um, at the moment. However, um, you know, we are, the health department's recommendations do change based on, on, on the data we're seeing, of course. Um, so, you know, of course, we, we, we are still, rec uh, we're strongly recommending um, that, you know, people that aren't vaccinated uh, get vaccinated and, of course, get your booster if you haven't already. Uh, we're recommending that people wear face masks in indoor settings. Um, and uh, along with that, you know, uh, after you are, have gone to a gathering or you travel, uh, we do want to recommend that um, people uh, do get tested for COVID. And of course, you know, if you have the option to, to, to stay home or work from home when you're sick, uh, we definitely would encourage people to do that as well. Um, we understand that's not always a possibility for everyone, but um, you know that that is a privilege. But of course, if if it's possible, we we would we would uh, recommend that as well. Um, so uh, so citywide, uh, uh, we're looking at um, almost over 17 million doses of of, of vaccines have been administered to people, um, and that it roughly equates to about six and a half million people that have been fully vaccinated within. The entire city of New York, uh, we have almost 88%, uh, 78% of people are fully vaccinated. Um, that's 88% of adults and and uh, 30, or excuse me, 88% uh, of adults and 59% of children. Um, so you know that's that's promising. You know, the the, the obviously the more people that are vaccinated, the uh, the, the 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 better that will be as far as um, fighting COVID through herd immunity. Um, uh, and uh, we have a little bit under 40% of New Yorkers that have had a, an additional dose, which being a, a booster shot. So um, I'm going to go through a few uh, data points specific to uh, Bronx Community Board 8. Um, and then after that, I'm going to screen share and go through some graphics with you all um, just to explain kind of what they mean and, and give uh, kind of an overview of, of our website and and, and uh, the different kinds of uh, data that, that you can access through it. So um, when we're looking at uh, Bronx Community Board 8 specifically, um, uh, what, what we have, uh, so for example, we, we have uh, vaccination rates that range from 
72% uh, um, in, the, in the zip code of, of 10468. Uh, that's Fordham, Kingsbridge, University Heights. Um, that, that is, oh, excuse me, 72% um, of people have been vaccinated. Um, uh, and obvious, as I said before, the citywide vaccination rate is 78%. Uh, um, so it is a bit lower. Um, if you go to uh, Kingsbridge, Marble Hill um, area, and that's uh, uh, 10463. Um, we're looking at 76% uh, uh, of people have been fully vaccinated. Um, when you go to uh, Belmont, Fordham, and Kingsbridge, uh, that's 10458. Uh, we're looking at 71% of people that are vaccinated. Um, and uh, Fieldston, North Riverdale, and Riverdale um, with the zip code uh, 471, uh, we have 81% of people that are vaccinated. So, you know, compared to the city, uh, you know, we're hovering around um, that average, um, you know, some higher, some lower. Um, the, the, the Bronx as a borough has a vaccination rate of about 74%. So again, you know, very, very close to, to what we see citywide and borough-wide. Um, when we look at uh, uh, the, the cases per 100,000, as I, as I uh, uh, talked about earlier, um, for the entire city of New York, um, the actual cases per 100,000 is almost 280 cases. Um, and then the Bronx, it's actually quite a bit lower. It's at 162. Um, so, you know, there's, 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 there's a lot of reasons why that could be. Um, obviously, the first one being that there's just not as much people getting COVID in the Bronx compared to other boroughs. Um, uh, Manhattan has by far the highest uh, rate of COVID compared to the other boroughs. Um, and that's really driving a lot of the cases that we're seeing right now. Um, in terms of the neighborhoods that I mentioned before, uh, um, uh, uh, zip code one, uh, 10471 and 10463, um, that's Fieldston, Riverdale, Kingsbridge, Marble Hill, uh, both of those are at um, uh, 252 cases per 100,000, um, and that number is calculated over the last week, um, the last week only. Uh, so that kind of gives us a, an estimate of, of what, what the current situation is looking like um, in the recent past. Um, and of course, when we look at the other two zip codes, um, Belmont, Fordham, Kingsbridge, uh, University Heights, uh, those are quite a bit lower at 145 cases per 100,000. Um, so again, you know, you see that, you know, that's, it's, we are, you know, right, uh, averaging around what the, what the, what the borough of the Bronx is averaging and and, and all uh, four zip codes are well below the city average. Um, so that's, that's good, that's, that's, that's a positive sign. Um, and then uh, the next data point I wanted to uh, talk about briefly um, is uh, the percent positive. And uh, basically, you know, that's the percent of tests that we get, um, how many of those tests are positive. Um, and so that gives you an idea of basically how prevalent COVID is in your, in your neighborhood or in your area. Um, obviously, you know, if you have a very high percent, you're having more people that have that are testing positive for COVID versus a lower percent. Um, and so uh, for Fordham, Kingsbridge, University Heights, we're at 4% uh, positivity rate, which is really good. Um, uh, when we go to Belmont, Fordham, Kingsbridge, uh, Marble Hill, um, the positivity rate is 7%, also, also very good. Um, and then when we go to Fieldston, North Riverdale and Riverdale, uh, it's a bit higher at 12%. Um, and the city average is 8%. So, um, you know, again, like uh, uh, three out of the four neighborhoods are doing quite well compared to the city average, and, and that's great. Um, so now I'm going to uh, share my screen for a second. I, I just want to go through a few graphs with you all uh, that we have available on the website um, and, you know, just kind of talk about what, what they mean uh, for, for the neighborhoods that we've just discussed. See here. Okay, can you all see my screen? All good. Okay, great. So this is our um, our website, of course, the uh, the the health department website, uh, nyc.gov, or I think it's yeah nyc.gov/doh. Um, I just I googled dohmh covid. It comes right up every time. Very easy to get to. Um, so. Uh, as so, so again, like I said before, the city, so what we're looking at here is a citywide percent positivity. Um, it's around 8%. 
Um, and the cool thing about this graphic is you can see kind of where we're going. Um, so uh, we have the last seven day average and the last 28 days average. So you have the last week compared to the last month. Um, and so, you know, as you can see here, cases are increasing. However, hospitalizations and deaths are decreasing. So, you know, um, with, with the current variant that we see that's very prevalent right now, the Omicron variant, um, what, we've, what we've seen is that uh, while it's, it's uh, much more contagious than some of the previous variants we've seen, however, uh, people don't seem to be getting as sick. Um, and, and that's due to, you know, uh, high vaccine uptake. Um, you know, if you're vaccinated, of course, you're not gonna be as sick compared to someone who's not. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, the Omicron variant is a bit less severe than some of the previous waves that we've oh. seen. You're talking the BA2 variant, right? Yes, that's? Yes, that's correct. Okay. BA2. Okay. Um, and so you might hear, yeah, it's BA2. Um, and of course, you know, there's some subvariants. Um, so, you know, you have like the Alpha, Delta, Omicron, those are uh, variants. And then within Omicron, we have seen um, a few subvariants. Um, and basically, it's just slightly different, but it's still within the Omicron family. Um, so if you hear people talk about subvariants, they're most likely referring to uh, Omicron currently, which is, which is by far, um, I think, upwards almost 90, 99% of, of all the cases that we're seeing are, are Omicron. Um, okay, so... So again, as I said before, here you can see the, uh, the, the cases per 100,000, we're almost at 280 citywide, and the Bronx is much lower. Um, and again, you see here Manhattan over 360, um, and Queens also at 300. Um, I just wanna show a couple of graphs uh, that, I, that I think are pretty compelling when we talk about uh, the importance of vaccines. Um, this one here is, is the case rate. Um, and this is, uh, here we have, this top line here are people that are unvaccinated. Um, and then this, uh, the second line here is uh, pe people that are vaccinated and boosted. And then of course, down here on the bottom, we have people that are vaccinated and not boosted. And this, this thicker line here is the citywide average that we've seen. And so of course, you know, as you can see from the graph, clearly if you're, if you're unvaccinated, you're at much higher risk um, for, for contracting COVID in the first place. Um, and then if we look at the, the, the data, uh, based the, the data for hospitalizations, um, we see a similar graph, but the difference in between unvaccinated and vaccinated people is much is much higher. Um, you know, very here, here at the very bottom, this is where we see vaccinated and boosted people and the unvaccinated graph is much higher. Um, and for deaths, we see uh, a somewhat similar pattern. However, as I mentioned before, um, Omicron is, is on, you know, what we are seeing on average is that it is, it is a bit less severe um, in terms of, um, you know, how sick a person gets. Um, and so, you know, we aren't seeing as many people dying from COVID that we, as we did, you know, maybe last year, or of course, you know, back in uh, 2020, um, you know, where, where things were, were really bad and, and the city was the epicenter. Um, so again, you know, these are all positive, positive numbers. Of course, you know, this this highlights the importance of, of, of getting vaccinated and encouraging others to get vaccinated as well. Um, and lastly, I just want to show you uh, a few uh, maps here. Uh, so here you can see the percent positive rate that I talked about earlier. Um, and this is the entire city color coded. Uh, so the lighter areas have a lower positivity rate, the darker areas, the darker areas have a higher positivity rate. Um, and again, as you know, as we talked about previously, Manhattan here, uh, very dark, very high positivity rate in, in a lot of neighborhoods. And here in the Bronx, you can see, you know, it, it does vary. Um, it looks like the highest level of percent positivity is, um, is uh, this Fieldston, North Riverdale uh, neighborhoods. Um, however, you know, you see a lot of uh, lighter shades. And again, um, you know, as I said earlier, that can mean a lot of different things, right? Either you know, again, people aren't testing positive for COVID. Um, but, you know, when we see graphs like this, we have to be, you know, we have to uh, uh, think about what it could mean. And, and, and one of the factors that uh, could, could contribute to something like this is uh, people aren't, aren't, aren't getting tested as much. So, of course, if people aren't actually getting tested for COVID, um, the percent positivity rate is going to be very low uh, compared to places where people are, you know, many, many people are getting tested. 
Um, it's, it's, it's a numbers game. So of course you would have the more people that get tested, the more people that are going to test positive, um, especially given the fact that, you know, we are still, we are still within, in a pandemic, right? So people are still getting sick. Um, and then let's see, okay. And so, and so again, we can see the test rate <clears throat> and this can tell, and this tells us uh, the daily test rate per 100,000 people, right? So you have the darker areas, again, we see um, the darker areas are some of the areas with highest test testing rates, and the lighter areas are some of the some of the places with the lower testing rates. Um, and again, you know, you see a lot a lot of darker areas in um, in Manhattan and some parts of Brooklyn and in Queens, um, and and uh, even down here in, in you know, the Mott Haven neighborhood. Um, uh, but you know, some of the other neighborhoods in, in Central Bronx and in and in East Bronx. Um, are a lot lighter, and that and that tells us that you know uh, we're not testing people as much as maybe we should be, or people aren't getting tested as much as as maybe we would like. And of course, you know you see this in, in Central Bronx, and of course here in between uh, uh, Brooklyn and Queens. Um, so that's you know uh, it's it's we we want to encourage people to get tested. Like as I said before, you know when you're traveling or you suspect an, an exposure, um, it's always good to you know be on the safe side and and get tested. Especially now, um, as Omicron is 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 not as severe as as some of the previous variants, um, you know, people can get sick and and have COVID and not actually feel sick, um, but that means that you can still spread it to people, right? So we want to be aware of that. Um, and lastly, I just have a couple more charts: the hospitalization rate. Um, here, this is you know again the darker areas are higher hospitalization rates; the the lighter areas are lower hospitalization rates. Um, and here, you know, we kind of see uh, a mixed bag. Um, you know, there isn't, you can't specifically say one borough or, or, or some neighborhoods are, are, or a cluster of neighborhoods are doing better or worse. You know, we see um, um, shades of, of dark and, and light all over the map. Um, so, you know, again, this is just, uh, uh, you know, people, people are still getting sick and people are still getting hospitals, uh, hospitalized. Um, although, you know, as I said before, the rates are much lower than what we've seen previously. Um, this, this graph shows that, you know, th there is still a, a risk of, of contracting COVID and of course getting sick enough to where um, you would have to, to, to go to the hospital. Um, and lastly, uh, the death rate. Um, here, it's similar to the hospitalization rate. You know, it's, uh, it's you know, some light and some dark. Um, uh, again, if you all remember from the first chart I showed you here on the summary page, um, you know, there's only been uh, four, four deaths, four confirmed deaths within the last month. Um, so, you know, very, very positive trends uh, compared to what we've seen previously. Um, and, and that about covers it. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I would encourage everyone, you know, if you have some free time or if you're curious about what's happening, I um, mean, in, in, you know, in, in, in your neighborhood and, and what's happening, you know, around in the city, um, I would encourage, you know, everyone to go to this website and, you know, kind of play around with it and see and see, see what we have, see what kind of data you can find. Um, it's, it's a really useful tool just for, um, you know, kind of calculating your own level of risk, right? You know, um, um, obviously the health department's always going to offer uh, suggestions and recommendations, um, but ultimately, um, it's up to the 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 citizen to to determine uh, what what how how what how what level of risk you're willing to engage in. Um, and with that, uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Omar, especially for inviting me tonight. Um, I'll take any questions if anyone has them. All right. Thank you so much for coming again. I have a question. Um, the the news that's coming out of DC is that um, the federal government is about to be they're about to run out of money. For testing and all, where is the city when it comes down to testing and vaccinations? Do we have enough? Because I, I think there's a projection that the the rate will increase for summer and for a winter. Do you think we have enough vaccinations? Uh, you know, it's it's that's it's a hard question to answer, right? I mean, I think mm -hmm. on on one hand, um, we've we have a really high vaccination rate compared to others. Uh -huh. Um, you know, we're at, uh, for adults, we're almost at 90%. That's a really positive sign. Um, we don't see that high of level of, of people getting boosted. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, um, uh, come wintertime or come fall, uh, that may be a problem as we gather indoors more. 
Um, but the good thing about, you know, this time of year is that it's, you know, it's almost springtime, it's getting warmer, uh, we're going to be able to gather outside and, and your risk of getting COVID from someone else is much, much lower when you're outside or when you have the windows open or something like that. Um, so, uh, and again, uh, with vaccine uptake, uh, we have seen kind of a slowing of, of, of vaccinations administered um, a citywide. Uh, that is because, as I said before, um, you know, we have really high vaccination rates. So there's not that many more people to vaccinate. Um, and then the other side of that is that, you know, the people, this 10% that have not yet received a dose of their vaccine, um, you know, it's been, it's been over two years, you know, they, they probably aren't going to get it, uh, to be frank. And, and that's concerning. Um, but at the same time, you know, we're, we're not, we're not forcing anyone to get the vaccine. We're just here to, to recommend and, and suggest uh, what, what we think is in the best interest of everyone's health. Um, as, as far as the money, um, I know that here at, uh, at the health department and at the, at the city and the state level, um, we are trying to pressure uh, the federal government to continue to fund um, COVID resources. Um, it's, it's difficult to say right now whether or not it's, it, it will work because uh, ultimately, you know, the budget is determined by um, Congress. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of news right now going on in D.C., um, so I imagine, you know, they are a bit preoccupied with, with other things uh, instead of COVID right now. Right. Uh, so, you know, I, I would like to say that, yes, you know, we, for, for, the, for the near future, we'll be fine. Um, but of course, you know, we, it, just like the flu and other seasonal illnesses, we always see uh, 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 an increase in, in the colder months. Um, yeah. and, you know, that would, be, that would be my concern personally, but... Mm -hmm. uh, the moment you know things things seem to be going well we're trending in the right direction right okay thank you um are there any questions for mr johnson bob kimberly sebastian natalie is a yeah actually i have a question uh, two questions <clears throat> one is has anyone done an overlay on uh back from the uh, communities where they have higher or lower vaccination rates as to positivity rates and hospitalization rates. Um, obviously, there are different, you know, shadings in each uh, community. Uh, is there any, what, what has the, been the data points of correlation between the two or the three? Right, that's, of course, right, right. That's, that's a great question. Thank you, thank you, Bob. Um, you know, uh, what, un un unfortunately, what we see um, when we look at, you know, some of the darker areas on as far as on the map, uh, when we see, you know, COVID cases, hospitalizations and deaths, um, a lot of those areas are some of the same neighborhoods. Um, and these are some of the neighborhoods that, you know, have um, some other quality of life issues, right, where, you know, there's, there's neighborhoods and areas of the city um, that have been kind of uh, devoid of resources or disinvestment of resources. Um, and so, of course, you know, um, part of what the health department is, is doing is, you know, we're really trying to, uh, to, to, to be in those neighborhoods and be present, um, you know, to try to promote not only uh, vaccination rates, but other kind of, of, of uh, public health programs. Um, because, you know, of course, um, they, they, they are correlated and, and they're not, it's not just, it's not just COVID, you know, this is where we're talking um, um, air quality, you know, we're talking about uh, food security, all these different types of things that that kind of um, um, lead to uh, to a lesser quality of life, and, and and that's a problem because the last thing we want is for someone who already may have some some uh, underlying health conditions to 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 be at risk again for for COVID, right? Um, and so part of what the health department's doing again is you know we're we're trying to be present in those areas and and really trying to promote. Uh, some of the some of the programs that we have. So, so I'm, I'm glad you put your uh, finger on that because that's exactly where I was going. Is that um, one of the things? Uh, I guess the uh, the horror tales that came out of COVID, particularly in 2020, uh, was the impact of uh, healthcare disparities uh, mm -hmm. that had been existing long prior to uh, were endemic in 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 uh, these communities and. Um, there's obviously a deeper impact upon uh, communities of color and uh, certain socioeconomic groups, and that seems to be holding true uh, even to the uh, to today, where there's a lesser uh, level of incident. The, the the ultimate question that comes out of that, of course, is 
and you address it a little bit, um, is how do we continue to uh, look at the holistic uh, uh, approach of what people need and how people can be, uh, so some of those healthcare disparities can be met so that when there is either another outbreak of COVID, which could be even worse, or <clears throat> other kinds of issues, and obviously this is a harbinger of things to come in the future, that uh, the issue of healthcare disparities has been addressed and not just shoved back underneath the rug as uh, often happens in these kinds of situations. Right, no, I, and I, I appreciate you saying that. Um, I'll, you know, that's 100% true. Um, you know, I think one of the, obviously, you know, a global pandemic is a horrible thing to happen, but um, one of the silver linings is that, you know, we, had, we have an opportunity as a country and as a city um, to, to really analyze our healthcare systems and, and see what we're, what we're doing well and what we're not doing so well. Um, and part of that, like you said, Bob, is um, you know, trying to address some of these health disparities that we see, especially in communities of color, uh, where we know that you know, the, uh, the quality of life is, is, is sometimes lower for, for no other reason except that it's a community of color, right? And so um, again, that's, you know, we, we are planning a lot of, a lot of uh, health equity and racial equity work at the health department now. Um, you know, unfortunately, these things take time and, and we're, we try to be really conscious and thoughtful um, when, when we, when we uh, implement these programs. Um, yeah. But, you know, of course, that's, that's the ultimate goal, right, is to, is to alleviate a, a lot of the, 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 the problems that we've been seeing. Thank you. Mm, thank you. Um, Sebastian? Yes, hi, good evening. Um, I have a question regarding the home test kits. Does the city have enough stockpile if there is a surge? Uh, because a lot of the uh, test kits that was distributed by the city, uh, they all had an expiration date, like six or seven months from the day of distribution uh, from the last batch. So do we have enough if, we, if there is a surge in summer or early winter? Um, I, I, I would assume so. I don't, I don't know. I can't say 100%. Um, I'm, 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 I'm sure you all remember in the last few months um, during the winter time when there was the, uh, the Omicron, the big Omicron wave we saw, um, uh, they, the, the federal government working with the states um, uh, um, had some, uh, what is it? It's an emer emergency manufacturing um, uh, policy where uh, they were able to uh, manufacture a lot of tests and then distribute them to, 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 uh, to everyone. Um, obviously, they were a little slow. We, uh, the federal government was a little late on, on, on that effort. Um, but uh, uh, I know that there are still, there are uh, uh, test kits available um, at, you know, different culture and cultural institutions all around the city, um, you know, uh, at the moment, of course, you know, I'm sure you all have seen those little tents on the side of the street where you can get tested. Um, but we have, the city has um, a lot of home test kits. And so um, I will, I'll share some resources with Omar just about um, uh, where you all can get those home test kits. Um, uh, as, 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 far, as far as moving forward, um, I, I'm, I, I'm not 100% sure that, you know, they're still manufacturing the test kits. I would imagine that, you know, it's not like we just completely stopped making them, right? So um, I would assume that somewhat, somehow, uh, somewhere, they're, they're still making those test kits. Um, uh, but, but again, you know, <clears throat> we, we, want, we want to make sure that everyone in the city has access to, to, to testing when, when they need it. Um, and the great thing about the home test kits is that you don't have to actually go anywhere. It's not like you know, before where we had to wait in line for hours to get tested for COVID, you know, you can take it in the comfort of your own home. Um, and so that's, that's a really, really huge uh, advantage now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, any more questions for Mr. Johnson? Kimberly, Natalie, is here? No? All right, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate this information. It was very useful. And I will be in contact with you. And you know, many thanks for the job that you guys are doing. Um, I know it can be easy, but you know, thank you so much for getting out as much information as you can. And we will be in contact, okay? Thank you so much. Absolutely, thank you so much. Right. Thanks everyone uh, uh, for your attendance and, and for your, your thoughtful questions. Uh, mm -hmm. 
obviously, Omar, you have my contact information. If anything, right. if it has any questions or has any um, inquiries or anything of, of the sort that you think the health department yeah. can help out with, um, right. please let me know. I might be happy to to hop on another call with you all or or or, or find someone else if if you know if if you need some other kind of assistance. So all so right. just just let me know. We'll be in touch. All right. Thank you so much again for coming. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good evening. Take care. Take care. All right, committee members. Um, we only have um for next meeting. Um, you know what? Let me go to the minutes. Have you guys been able to look at the minutes? Sebastian, Bob, Kimberly. No, Omar. I didn't get a check. I, I I'm driving, so. Ah uh, yes, Omar. Yes, did you get a chance to look at the minutes? Uh, no. Are you seeing it? Yes. Um, so I have one minor corrections. Um, Kimberly, mm -hmm. I have to have your name right here. Okay. Right, so I have to have your name there and then I'm gonna resend it to the office. So, we at the last meeting, which was in February, no March. March, um, we discussed budget priorities. Yes, I remember right. we we're trying to right. prioritize. Yes, yeah, so this is the list which was sent to the budget chair. Okay. All right. That was the only item we had on the agenda for that night. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you guys want to take a look at it and approve it with the amendment to have your name on there. Okay. Mm. Mm. Want me to roll, scroll, go? Yeah, I'm sorry. Can you scroll down, please? Yeah, this is it. Okay, uh, medical supplies, counseling services. That was And then what is below number two of the ranking? Yeah. Um, you mean number one? This is number oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay. Um. Domestic violence, mental counseling. Okay. I thought there was a discussion about the topic of possibly having in regards to socioeconomic uh, topics. The budget chair said um, he, he highly recommended against it. So mm. I, because before I think I had it something like that for, you mean for like a community input group that's what you're saying mm -hmm. yeah that we we could create our own working group but it wouldn't go in here oh okay okay are you wait are you talking number five it sounds like number five Look, read number five which can comprise residents community health so tells regarding advice to how to combat the future communicable virus outbreak i don't know if that your community that's i think it was more it was it it wasn't part of the outbreak, but it was more of like a generalized idea, mm -hmm. and it would be sub subtopics. Right. Yeah, we would have to create like our own working group. It wouldn't the budget chair okay. he advice against it. So I just say, you know what, I'll just discuss it and we'll okay, do that's fine. Thing. That's fine. So let me do at the bottom. Okay. okay. Okay, it's fine. Sebastian, what about you? Sebastian, you there? All right. Um, uh, sorry, Omar, I, can, I cannot read the minutes because I'm attending from my car. So, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I, I cannot comment on it without reading it. But I didn't get a chance to go over uh, it in the email. So do we want to leave the minutes till next meeting? Yes, it's only two members, just me and Kimberly. Um, no, we have four members. So me, Bob, Sebastian, which is you and Kimberly, so four members. So um, I'll just, 
leave it to um, table it for next meeting, all right? Okay. All right. So, Bob, um, do you guys have any ideas what we could do for next meeting? Any topics or discussion that, you know? No? Well, if we could find somebody <clears throat> um, who could actually talk about the healthcare equity issue, I think it would be very important. Healthcare equity. Okay. Okay, so I could possibly, I could talk, I could get to you because I know you have a lot of contacts. I could talk to you as well and um, try to reach out to um, the um, Department of Health and see if they could have someone come in and talk about it also. Well, they, ha they have a whole, they have a department on it, so it might be something. Right, to to. Yeah. right, right. Okay, all right. Any more ideas? All right. All right, so guys, thank you so much for coming. It's gonna be, a, um, it was good to see you. So thank you so much for coming. And do I have a motion to adjourn? Yes. Yes, thank you so much. All right, take care everyone and be well and be safe. <laughs> you too, take care. Good night, thank you. be safe. Good night. <clears throat>